Welcome to the Best Business Podcast. My mission is to help create 200 new multimillionaire business owners. How? You'll do better when you know better. In my interviews, you'll hear from self-made millionaires, seven-figure business owners, authors, and world-class experts sharing how they did it so you can too without experiencing the same obstacles they did. Now, if you like this interview, please share it with a friend you think will benefit. They'll appreciate it, and I will as well. You can also connect with me on social media. Look for Daryl Urbanski, D-A-R-Y-L, Urban Ski, U-R-B-A-N-S-K-I, and add me so we can be friends. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy what I've prepared for you right here, right now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always, and today we are joined by Janicia Alora Lowe former Miss Singapore International and recipient of Southeast Asia Woman of Excellence 2010. Janicia is also the founder of Soul Rich Woman and a public speaker on social media, entrepreneurship, brand building, and e-commerce. Soul Rich Woman represents a collaborative movement in Asia where women are encouraged to rise up and chase their dreams. It's about encouraging the multi-hyphenated and being proud of it. You are a mother, a daughter, and a wife, but you're also a boss. By creating a supportive hub of like-minded female entrepreneurs, business leaders, and those aspiring to be, Soul Rich Woman aims to inspire more women to think big, empowering them to bring their A-game in order to change the game. Faster to join us today, here today to support our female entrepreneurs in the audience and help us all manage our businesses and lives a little better. So, Janicia, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm doing great. Thank you, Daryl, for having me here. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. It's always fun to talk to you. We have we have we have fun conversations, so it's all good. And I know the listeners are really going to benefit too, because it's important to see different people's perspectives, and not only that, but even hear from business leaders around the world. Yeah, I think that's a real value that for some people, you know, they might be in their city or in their small town or in their community or their school or wherever. But you know, it's especially even when you're in business, sometimes you can feel like an island, right? Like you're so distant connected. So it's great to be able to bring fresh energy and insight and again different perspectives so and i and i also want to acknowledge all the female members of the audience as well i think we have a lot of guys on the show and it's not intentional it's just how the cookies are coming out so i'm, I'm glad to shine some light on what you're doing so obviously you've accomplished a lot you come a long way you're helping hundreds of women around the world grow their businesses and be more successful but how did you get started like how did you even get into business do you come from an entrepreneurial background like your parents run businesses or no, I, I wasn't, my family wasn't running any businesses at all. You know, I started working and supporting myself through school since I was 14 years old. And it was because my family had some financial issues. So it was, it was really terrible. Imagine waking up 5 a.m. in the morning to go to school, doing stuff till 1 p.m. And then after that, you know, doing project work. And after project work, you know, about 5 p.m., people will go to the shopping mall, will go chill out, they'll go home, and then I need to go out to work. Because of my background in this teaching and training in the health and wellness industry, I started to realized that entrepreneurial spirit was within me. I wanted to build a, a community to supply trainers to mm. fitness centers, to you know community centers, fitness centers, companies. So I started from there. And I had no business experience, honestly, because I'm a medical student. I have no knowledge about business. And throughout the years, I was just feeling my way around, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it, was mm-hmm. event, it was eventually when I met my mentor, James Wee. He coached me, he mentored me, and that was when I, boom, you know, I went into the next level because he told me that e-commerce, and you know, I need to learn about e-commerce, I need to learn about, you know, stop, le- stop trading time for money and really leveraging through technology to build my business. So that was when I kind of transformed the way I look at business. I stopped trading time for money. So over the years, fast forward, right, trading for money. And then I was like doing funnels, I was doing social media marketing, I was doing brand building and then generating leads online. And this was how things got transformed. Got it. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's that's huge. And that's a it's a great journey as well. And I always spoke before, too, that, you know, having one having one was it Miss Singapore International that the thing I can I've, even for you is a challenge is to be able to rise up and be seen as a leader and 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 appreciated for the struggle that you've had and more than just your looks right I mean it's something that can help you but also can some ways can hurt you so just amazing to hear that like even just talking about how you've been working since you were 14 in that like I think everything you've got you've really dug deep and had to earn so hats off to you on that but what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced what were some of the things that you struggled with the big milestones you had to overcome in your career so far 
So the, the couple of biggest milestones that I have to o- uh, overcome so far is fear, the fear of f- failure and the fear of success. Because many of times when mm-hmm. we see, when we want to do something, we just want to be perfect. I mean, having one Miss Singapore was like, you know, it was through multiple failures through, you know, you know, not winning in Miss Singapore universe. And then I was like, oh no, I was placed first runner up. Okay, never mind. We joined that again. And we I went to Miss Singapore International. I joined it and then I won it. So that that was kind of an affirmation for me that, hey, I should just embrace failures because failures are just wasting energy and wasting my time. We only have 24 hours a day. We don't have that much time to mm-hmm. really spend that. We should just and just imagine it away and just throw it out the window so that we can focus fully in our know, 24 hours, not worrying about stuff and keep progressing forward. The second challenge that I faced uh, throughout my career was that beauty because, I mean, I'm a beauty queen. Right. <laughs> so people will say, hey, beauty queen girl, what do you know? Right. So I, <laughs> I kind of get it a lot. Like, what do you really know? The skepticism of that in the Asian context, even you're beautiful, when you do business, they're like, okay, you don't know your shit really well. So literally, I have to work doubly hard and prove to them and prove to myself more so that I could do a lot. And because of that, I took up a lot of courses. I learned about NLP. I learned about emotional EQ. I learned about different things. I pick up a lot of skills. I pick up anagram. I pick up, I learned how to do funnels. I learned how to do this and that. So that gave me that drive that is immensely rewarding because of that challenge that came up. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like to turn challenges into positive energy. So that's what my A game is all about. That's awesome. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes, and a little disclaimer for anyone that has sensitive ears, I'm about to swear, but one of my favorite quotes about success is, success is like pregnancy. Everyone congratulates you, but nobody knows how many times you had to get fucked to achieve it. And that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's like a reality of business and life, that you just don't know how many times are you going to fall flat on your face? How many times are you going to stumble? How many times are you going to fall? How many times are you going to get it wrong and upset a client and maybe disappoint people, maybe disappoint yourself, disappoint your family? Like you put a lot on the line, you know what I mean? And it doesn't disappoint because you're a failure, but things don't always just work out the way you plan. So yeah, hats yeah, off that, to you. Were- Go, go yeah, there were two two nuggets that I picked up. First, there were there are no victims, only volunteers. So if you don't participate, the only failure is the failure to participate. So if you keep thinking that failures are you know stuff that you you have you're so fearful of that you think that you cannot overcome, hey, if you don't even participate in it, you don't even know that you fail, and because of that, you will probably live your life with regrets. Mm, mm, mm. Well said. Very, very true. So for anyone that's listening to this, that they're either just starting out or they're in a spot in their business where they're struggling and they're feeling some overwhelm or frustration, what's your record, like, what's, what advice do you have for them? Well, when you're experiencing overwhelm and frustration, you know, go back to the drawing board. Bring out A3 paper or go back to that, that big piece of drawing block that you have and go back to fun- foundations and your basics. What exactly is the key message you're talking about? What is your niche exactly you're looking at? You know, what kind of message you're giving to people? Because selling to everybody, sell to nobody. Speaking to one person, speak to many. So you need to really go back to the drawing block and ask yourself, who are you really targeting? Because when you are frustrated, when you are overwhelmed by this shiny object syndrome, there's so many causes out there, you know, there are so many programs that you can learn from. Hey, stop piecemealing all the freebies together because it ain't going, not going to work. Look for a mentor, look for a coach who can help you and guide you to, you know, put the pieces together. Go back to the drawing block and put map out your railway because the more focused you are, the faster you will reach your end goal. There you know, slower you are and then you are not willing to invest in yourself to hire someone, to get a mentor or a coach, that's when, you know, your success could potentially be delayed. Mm, that's I love that. I love that. I love that. In fact, one of the things that you said that I appreciated the most was when you said the more focused you are, the faster you get to your goal. I think that's really real. I think that's a real thing. You can achieve your goal in a week. You can achieve your goal in a month. You can achieve your goal in a year. How many hours are you willing to commit? How much, you know, are you willing to dedicate to the cause, to whatever? And I and I also love, I mentioned going back to basics. Fundamentals are fundamental. I really learned that from martial arts because I did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mm-hmm. we'd always want to learn, like, you know, after you learn kind of the basics, you want to learn all the fancy stuff. You hear about, like, oh, like rubber guard and all these things like octopus guard and, and turtle. Like all these weird things that sound shiny and cool. But when you start doing them and realizing it, they only work on the beginners, 
these things don't work at every level. And then all of a sudden you find out that the most basic things you learn as a complete newbie are things that can that can still work at the highest level, where all this fancy stuff, it doesn't really work. The guys at the highest level just shut it down right away. So basics, fundamentals are fundamental for a reason. Fundamentals will work in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, right? Like it's mm. just really hard to mess that up. And so, yeah, and mastery is doing, what is it? I forget what it is. Is it virtuosity? Virtu- virtuousness is doing the ordinary, ordinary, ordinary things extra- extraordinarily well. I think that's what it was. But- but for me, that formula that really sticks with in my mind is to have courage to do the thing that you want to do. Because when you say that people have overwhelmed, you know, in their business and their life, it's because they don't have the commitment and they're, you know, they're not, they are not having the commitment to want to overcome it. So my formula is to have courage and courage equals to action plus doubt. Because doubt is where you, when you overcome this, when you can be overcomer, right? Plus commitment equals to courage. So action plus doubt plus commitment gives you courage. Mm, right. And the thing is, is, everybody has doubt. Everybody has doubt. Yeah. But people... And because, yeah, yeah, because you overcome it, that, that precisely you have courage. Mm-hmm. So well said. That's obviously coming from experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What was one of the hardest things that you had to overcome? You already gave us a couple, but where do you think was one one of the biggest doubts that you would overcome for yourself? That I wasn't good enough. That everything mm. that I do, I wasn't good enough. Because when my partners invited me to invest in a cafe retail chain, I was like, who am I? You know, you guys invested hundreds and thousands of dollars and, you know, millions of dollars. And I'm like, small fry. So it's kind of that constant self-talk that putting myself down that I think that I would not, would not be there. You know, that I would not be beside a big boys. You know, it's like you're just playing small. So my biggest challenge was always playing small because, you know, last time this happened to me and was that happened to me. So I think I should be defining myself within this square little box. So mm. it was the constant work of the mindset to get out of the box, to get out of the comfort zone because there, we must not. We must be responsible for our life. There's no lay blame. There's no self justification. We just want to tell the truth with compassion, and you know, boom, and really work on hustling while I'm still young. Why do I want to work uh, hustle when I'm old, right? So it's kind of overcoming that path for me, and really understanding that you know there is there is power in clarity. So when I work mm. on myself mindset and having the clarity and that when there's when there's power imagine yourself focusing on all the yellow things in the world right now you will only see yellow if you focus yourself on all the red things in the world you'll only see red so exactly what happened if we become tunnel vision it it, it doesn't work for us it is it, it, it tunnel vision doesn't mean focus it's a fine line with that so when when I was given the opportunity, I battled my my mind, my guts out. And because I overcame it, I realized I could make a million dollars. I could, we, as a group, we could make $10 million. And that was when my my energy of being able to attract the, the millions of dollars increased tremendously because of that breakthrough of stopping being playing small. Mm, 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 mm. So well said. So well said. In fact, that's Michelangelo has a quote. It's like the biggest shame. What is it? The, the biggest crime is not that people set goals too high and fail to meet them. It's that people set goals too low and they achieve them. And I think that that's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good on you. That mindset piece is so big. There's a great book about of my, it's actually called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And it's based is Carol Dweck, I think, wrote it. And she mm-hmm. did and she did all this research, like literally thousands of university students and business entrepreneurs and found out that there's two distinct mindsets. There's people with a fixed mindset and people with a growth mindset. And so you you identified yourself as overcoming the fixed mindset problem where you felt that your life was defined because this had happened to you and that had happened to you, fixed events, you thought that that was defining who you were as opposed to like, you know, it's just like, hey, like I'm just on my growing path. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the difference, some people define themselves by a fixed thing. If they fail to achieve this, if they get a chance to go on stage and they bomb, they're like that now defines them as opposed to, oh, I just haven't practiced enough. I need to go back and get, I need to get a mentor. I need to get more training. I need to get up on another stage right away. Like, you know what I mean? Like, man, that didn't go well. I need to get on three more stages to make up for that bad one. You know, like people with a growth mindset appreciate that they're on a path 
And that they, all constant change, <laughs> right? And growth and progression. Where a lot of fixed mindset people, and if both ways, they'll define themselves as, as a success because of something that happened years ago. Like, oh, I did that, so you know, pff, I'm golden. Like, well, hold up, <laughs> right? And in some ways, that leads to their demise in the future. So the mindset piece is really huge, and you just really defined it right there, talking about how you thought that fixed things that your past defined who your future. One of the things that I love about being human, and I constantly try to remind myself of this, is that as humans, we can really accomplish anything we want. Like, we put someone on the moon. Like, we invented flight. Right now, you and I are talking from opposite sides of the planet in real time. <laughs> yeah. Right? And we're recording it and sharing it with thousands of people. Like, that's just phenomenal, the fact that we can do that. Humans can do so much, but my dog... As much as I love her, how amazing she is, she will only ever do the four or five things a dog can do, and that will define <laughs> her for the rest of her life. But as a human today, anybody can choose a new direction, and almost like a boat, just changing direction and leaving the, every, the past in the wake. Like, you can do that. Tomorrow, today, you can wake up, decide you want to be a ballerina, decide you want to be an astronaut, decide you want to be a scientist, decide you want to be a business owner, and start down that path. And everything that happened before, you know, it really only is as, as attached to you as you let it be. So I think that's a really powerful, really powerful message out there about the mindset and the commitment and the dedication, you know, focusing on your niche, making sure that you got the right messaging. And the messaging is really about understanding who your prospects are, right? The niche. So it almost goes back to the other one, which is back to basics. When you're talking about who you're targeting, what KPIs do you have that really matter and getting more focused or how and determining how focused you want to be in your goal. How soon do you want to get there? Do you want to take one year, three years, seven years? Do you want to get there in one year? Do you want to get there in six months? Do you want to get there in three months? You know, so that's really powerful. Yeah, I agree with that. I keep telling my people, I said, you girls got to wake up and buck up because you are using the same resources. Whether is it three months or eight months or 18 months down the road, you will still be spending time and you still be spending your efforts because to have the results that you want, you need to tune your belief. You need to tune your mindset. You have got to have an attitude of hustle and you got to change your behavior to get to the result. So if you are just, you know, kind of stuck and think that, no, you know, Janisha, we can just spend our time and slowly get to the end result and the end goal that we want yeah but think about it you're still wasting your money you're still eating and breathing oxygen you still need to eat you still need to have your funnels built out but for 18 months no results or three months eventually you still get the results which path do you want to take so i always tell them you it's always 6% people and 94% system. You're going to leverage on technology, Ooh. leverage and stop trading time for money so that you can grow and scale your business. And that's how we grew our businesses. I love that. 6% people, 94%, 94% system. That's awesome. Can you define a system for me? Okay. So for us, system is about technology, which is like, for example, your funnels. How do you do your, for us, it's like cafe, right? We have the online ordering system. How do you do royalty programs? How do you do your, you know, basically all this network, the ecosystem that we've built, the membership site, and then we have the redemption centers, yeah, all these bits. They come together in the nine, the six percent of the people basically is your staff, you know, the people, your admin, your VAs. But without all this system, we will take a longer process to go from mm -hmm. where we are now to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I love that. That's and systems are so important. It might sound boring, but I, I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to systems because I just it's so empowering when I have a system in place that can do the work for you or, again, leverage it. Again, technology is a phenomenal thing, and most people take it for granted. Like a lot of people, even when you talk about like your niche and messaging and who you're targeting, a lot of people go on the Internet every day and they search for stuff on Google, and they don't even really realize the power of the tool that they're using. Like you can go into Google and you Google AdWords, for example, and do keyword research. And some people are like, so what? That's just keywords. But you're reading people's minds. Like you're literally reading their most private thoughts. Like someone goes, they're alone in their room, they're crying because they're suffering from something. They have some sort of pain in their life. They have some sort of ailment or disease that they're suffering from. Their, their significant other is treating them a certain way and they can't tell anybody about it. So they go online, they go to Google and they put in their question and their thoughts. They pull it out of their head, put it into the Google search engine, and then they search for it. And you can be on the other end of that going, hey, how many people are suffering from this? How many people have this problem? How many people are going through that? And then build a business around it. I mean, the technology is phenomenal. To do that before, yeah. before Google, 
how would you be get that such candid answers from people, you know, like, and be able to connect with those people. So it's really, really, really empowering. But yeah, I love that. And, yeah. Another piece of the technology that we are using now is a little bit of artificial intelligence, which is like bots. Ooh, you know how Facebook yeah. Messenger, we use bots to connect with people. I mean, yes, we do have, you know, customer service people sitting and behind live chats, but hey, who can respond within that minute? Who can respond within that second? So it's all about automation, making that so easy. You know, you can preset how the, the com- communication is going to flow, how, what kind of topics you want to talk about, and they could be your first line of defense. Uh-huh. So using bots and AI is literally you know, the next phase and next wave of my technology piece that I'm using in my, on my platform, Soul Rich Woman. In fact, I mean, of course, we leverage a lot on membership systems to gather all the members of women all around the world. But here, I think bots is like super awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No bots are, yeah. I'm just getting into some of the bots. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's going to be an interesting world in the future. As, as we get smarter and our computers get smarter, I think we're a long ways away from, you know, eliminating the need for us in general, but definitely for us automating and leveraging your stuff. And it's something, you know, people don't fail, systems do. If you, anyone listen to this as a business and they feel like their staff are underperforming and yada, 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 I hate to break it to you, but it's not your staff, it's you. It's that your staff yeah. most likely don't have the direction that they need. They don't have the training that they need. They don't have the feedback loops that tell them when they're doing good or bad. Most people want to be successful at what they're doing and most people want to do a good job, but a lot of people don't get the communication, the feedback and the guidance that they need, you know, because even there's tons of people, like I do one thing with my team, we do a weekly one-on-ones and we keep track of what we call a three key metrics. And so for every role in the company, we've defined three things that define success in that business and some are really easy to like some are really tangible like growth like sales even you know what how are sales Did, you know but others are kind of intangible right like were you punctual like you know are are you being proactive or something like that and I'm just pulling things out as examples but then I like the the staff member will rate themselves and myself or the manager or the project manager that's that's with them for the one-on-one will give them a score as well and they take the average and one of the things that's happened is we found that we had the a great person in the wrong role so we moved her over and guess what she went from getting seven out of ten and four out of tens to getting eight and a half and nine out of tens on a regular basis so the person is not a failure right we had thankfully and of course was it uh, success success as many fathers but failure is an orphan so I'm not talking about the times that I failed and the things that I burned and how I figured this stuff out but with her like we you know it was we saved a valuable employee who has a ton of value to give by making sure that we the person like the system didn't fail her and right there's a lot of great people that have a ton of potential and you put them into a company and the company doesn't have the systems in place or again and it's just it a lot of people get treated like garbage and they get discarded and used and churned up and spit out by companies but it's because the systems aren't in place to properly take care of them and then some of the most successful companies you see the best companies you see they they really focus on things like customer service they really focus on the training and feedback of their employees and also making sure that everyone's aligned to the major main company goals that's the other thing right you don't want to have little silos of people working in different directions and playing tug of war because they're pulling in opposite ends you want everyone focused on the same goals so now, I have a question. Do you feel like you've had any habits that have really helped you through these transitions and through these struggles that you've had on your path to success? Oh, yes. I Every day I do a daily kind of a setting intention. I basically do this to help me to open up my mindset and keep reminding myself what is the goal that I want to achieve. So, for example, if I like, for example, I want to work with women who are more influential, more powerful. Or, for example, if I want a team who will love me and who will grow with me, I set an intention every single day. Because we can't just roll out of bed and say, mm-hmm. okay, it's just another day. And then you live your life like that. Come on, I run a cafe retail chain. We have presence in three countries. You know, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. I run a distribution business. I can't be just living my day by routine, right? Mm-hmm. It's all about setting that intention, bring that focus back to core. And because you know foundation is key but when you have strong foundations building blocks and that's when when you rise up to war and you do business that's when where your power and your energy will move forward to so people can feel the energy on the team right when you mm-hmm. meet your staff how how can they connect with you how do they know you are the leader how can do they know there's teamwork involved mm-hmm. it's when you set your intention right that's when all the pieces will flow yep and when the people know that you care about them as well, 
That they're not yes. just clocking in and clocking out. Yeah, exactly. So, that's so awesome. that was one of the key habits. So the key habits is setting setting intention uh, to is constantly go out there to meet people who is bigger than who we are because mm. you are the average of the six people that you hang out with the most. You can't just stay in your network and be stagnant and hope that all your life will be rosy and a bit of roses down the road. No, it's all about progression. I mean, humans without progression are dead. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We're social creatures, so. Yeah, we just want to keep moving forward and looking up to people. Who can we learn from? What are the things that we can grow into? Because I don't want to live life with regrets. I want to keep opening up myself to new possibilities and new growth for myself. Mm, mm, mm. I'm taking notes here. I'm a big fan of that. So we have daily intent, network, and connect with those who can help us grow. What else we got? Yeah. One last one is always go back to family. I believe family is the core of everything that I do. I spend time with my family. I have dinner with them. I message them. I love them to bits because I find that when there is harmony within the family, I mean, because this is very Asian, okay? It's like (laughs) for us, when there is family that's supportive, a family who loves you because we live with each other, right? We live very closely with each other here in Singapore and Asia. So, we believe that really being connected with my parents and seeing them grow old and being able to fulfill as a daughter role. I mean, daughter, Philip piety, And that makes me want to do more because I'm running my business not for me. It's a, there's a greater purpose to everything. I love my family so much. And the energy, the big why I'm doing all of these things is for the family. So your big why is extremely important. And my mm. big why is my family. So the third one, the third bit is the family that 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 foundation piece but also the big why behind what you're doing why you're doing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i'm a huge fan of that in fact it's funny you mention it and since we're talking about female entrepreneurship there was a study done about this glass ceiling at least in america where men and women might have the same job but the men would be paid more and they were doing research into that and i was reading kind of a it was just an article about the results of the of the study that they did and they found that women do often get paid less than men for the same role, the same job. But when the job interview, when they started talking to women that were about to go and like apply for a job or something, and they reminded them like, hey, this isn't just a job for you. Remember, you're going, this job is what you're going to use to feed your kids with, to save for their future. And they kind of armed them to, because men, there's more pressure on men to be the provider, to be the hunter and right and go. And so men have that pressure their whole lives. But when women were reminded of that providerness, like this job is to provide, not just for you, but your family and for your future and your retirement, women out negotiated men in terms of salary, pay, like terms and conditions of employment, vacation time, women like stomped men. Like it was ridiculous. They said that the glass ceiling is there mostly because of how, I guess you could call it pre-framing, how women are kind of pre-framed for their careers and jobs. And people can argue about that in different ways if they want. I'm just, don't kill the messenger. But that was the thing is that if you say your big why, having a why, and you can just tell for yourself that that really grounds you, connects you, and you're just crushing it. And you've got that behind you. And there might be some women that aren't as tied into that. Do you know, there's a lot of women that may group, maybe grew up in a household where the man was supposed to do everything or the woman just wasn't it wasn't even about the man doing anything but it's just their female role models weren't that those of you know a woman that's going to go out there and provide and try and chase her own dreams and her passions you know like it wasn't like that it was more subdued and so i think that's a the why is so incredible i mean if you have a big enough why women have lifted cars to save kids you know because they (laughs) because their child's in danger that's a burning desire that's there's a great book think and grow rich and if you look at the mm-hmm. – all you have to do is look at the table of contents and it's like a formula. All those things, if you can check them all off, it's like they're like engines to push you towards your success. <laughs> you know, It's not a la carte. It's not like, oh, I have this one, but no, I'm not into that one. You need all of those and one of them is a burning desire because – there's so much that gets thrown at you. There's so many ups and downs. If you, you know, if you're just not that interested, meh, you know, you, meh, like the little list of hurdles is going to stop you in your tracks. So it's a great list. You gave us daily intent, network and connect with those who can help us grow. Always go back to family, to your roots, which I think is super important. And then have a big why. Remember why you're doing this for and what, what your impact you want to have on the world. So... Now, what do you see some of the greatest mistakes women making, either your clients or just in your community as a whole? What are some of the biggest mistakes and things that trip them up? 
Oh, many of my clients in the community is that they have a lot of fears that's holding them back because they are confined in this role thing where they need to be the mothers, they need to be at home, they need to be a homemaker, or maybe they feel that there is this need of responsibility of taking care with their uh, taking care of their kids. Nothing wrong with that, but more of encouraging a space where they can do both at the same time. So they feel that they cannot do it all. They just feel that they can have only have one or the other. Thank God that Singapore, because we are more, <laughs> we are a very, a very good space for mothers to work at the same time. We encourage mm. that a lot. We have a lot of support, you know, in the community. In, I mean, just in Singapore alone, we have co-working spaces that allow mothers to bring their kids to work. That's awesome. You know, yeah. And that is not seen and heard of in other places. But in Singapore, we do have that. And we even have, you know, support because of our support network here. Uh, family support is very strong. We live close to each other. So like grandparents and, you know, mm -hmm. there are helpers here who can help us to take care of our kids, right, when we are away. So naturally, this these issues can actually be taken care of with this uh, support situations. There are some other challenges that are faced by my community is that the, the constant changing of evolving of social media of that growth of technology they, they kind of find it a little bit hard to keep chasing and keep embracing so they are kind of staying stuck in their okay you know it's just a Facebook it's just Instagram it's just a another LinkedIn so they're not seeing that leverage but I'm sure marketing automation and social media marketing is picking up here in this area where they are learning more to apply it back to their business mm. You know, it's funny because I had this actually come up with another interview I did recently where the gentleman was saying that, you know, like Facebook changes so much and so fast and social media can be really hard to get caught up in. So you got to constantly keep learning because, the, you know, the rules are changing. And I have something to say that I think might be valuable and I hope will be valuable for people. And that's that, you know, the tactics frequently change. So if you're talking to like Facebook ads or Twitter ads or LinkedIn ads or something like that, like the, the tactical things like video ad versus image ad versus, you know, like all that sort of the tactical stuff can change frequently. In fact, Facebook, when you, if you log into Facebook ads, things are being moved around all the time. Oh, where'd that button go? Man, where's that button? I'm looking for that <laughs> button again. Right. Yeah. But that's the tactical, the strategic things rarely change. They do change sometimes, but generally speaking, they're slow to change. But the principle-based things almost never change. And so something I really want to help everyone here think about is traffic times conversion equals profits. And so whether it's Facebook, whether you're blogging, whether you have a podcast or do podcast interviews, whether you're running paid ads, whether you're at a trade show, at a convention, whether you're on the street networking or in a marketplace, whether no matter where you are, if you're in a mall, it's all to get traffic. And traffic is like, you know, traffic is an audience of your target market times conversion. So you're taking this audience, this traffic, and you're pushing them towards something. It's either a quote request form. It's either an introductory offer. It's an opt-in form for some sort of freebie or checklist or diagnostic survey or who knows what, right? Times conversion equals boom, either money if you're asking for a sale right away or if you're just collecting leads like, hey, out of this list of 10,000 people, who's interested in this? Boom, now you get 1,000. Hey, that's your new traffic and you're going to push them towards Right? The next thing, conversion, and it equals money if you're there. If you're not at the money yet, then you keep moving forward. So all that tactical stuff of whether you're on Instagram or Pinterest or Tumblr or whether you're doing Periscope or Snapchat or all, all that stuff, the tactical things are going to change and they're constantly change frequently. But if you have the right strategy set up with, based on the right principles, you can hire people who are interested in staying up to date on all that tactical stuff and just go, hey – I traffic guy, I need this much, you know what I mean? Like I need you to help me with this. I need you to help me with that because it's all pushing towards this. That's going to earn me money. And I know what I can afford to spend per lead. I can, spend, I can afford to spend $2 per lead because for every 10 leads, I get one sale and this is how my numbers work out. And that's strategy and principle based stuff. So if anyone's feeling overwhelmed and listening to this call based on their strategy, like, like same thing, like, ah, social media, how do I do it? What do I do it? Focus again, like, what's the purpose? What's the big why? Why? Why do you want to be on those channels? What does it matter? Who cares if you have 20,000 followers? I know people, I know a guy that spent a ton of money on Facebook to have a million followers on Facebook, and when he posts something, if it gets 50 to 100 likes, it's a miracle. I'm like, what, like, you know what I mean? You build this big audience, but it's just, he just wanted people. There was no why, cohesive whole to bring it together. He just wanted an audience. But there's, 
so many different interests. It's not a focused target. It's like nobody cares. You know, it's like you just scoop up a bunch of random people from all over and drop them somewhere and there's nothing to connect them together. So that's yeah, I answer. super agree. I, I super agree with you with that because recently, because I, I run this marketing automation tour in Singapore, Hong Kong, and Vietnam, and what happened is we found out that people are stopped uh, downloading are, are kind of like not downloading ebooks anymore, like ten pages, twenty pages ebooks anymore. They're looking for cheat sheets and looking for checklists and swipe mm. files, something they can use immediately because these days is so crowded. Everybody is giving an ebook. Everybody is doing the same thing. How do you differentiate? And people want fast and want results. Mm. So that's how I told I what I tell my community that you need to step up and really change your a their a game as well. Besides that, also storytelling is another big piece that mm. I keep encouraging them to do it because on social media it's no longer people hate being sold to. Do you agree? Yes. Do you agree with that? Right. Yeah, I I hate being sold to, but I love to listen to stories. And if I can identify with a story, if I your message speaks to me, then I would maybe buy from you your services or your products. So storytelling is one of the key things that I encourage my community to do that. So how can they do it? How do you build a story that is around you? So you need to recognize first, what is your niche? I said that once and again and too many times because... People just are greedy, you know, they want to sell their skincare products and then they want to sell the anti-aging and the and the natural daycare and then they want to sell everything. And then the services they want to sell from coaching, business to all the way to, you know, something else. It's like they have this whole range of products that people, that they want to sell to everybody. But <laughs> don't you know that customers get confused? I mean, how many, how many burgers do McDonald's sell? Yeah. How yeah. many burgers? Well, I don't even know a lot. <laughs> yeah, but. But that's only the few, like fish burger, the hamburger. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. That- yep. The few burgers that McDonald's sell, right? And then when people go to McDonald's, they just look at the menu. I want this A, B, C, or D. It's really straightforward. And then after that, then you cross sell. Do you want large fries? Do you want, you know, Coke? Or do you want to change it to Milo, right? Mm -hmm. There is an opportunity for you to enter into the customer's psychology through this cross sell only you don't, only if you don't confuse the customers. So be very specific exactly what you have. Always list down two services or three products that is your main thing. Don't be afraid to niche and tell the story that relates to your audience. And that was that's why I always tell them when you do that, you know, that's when people know exactly where to buy. That's another thing. Sometimes they don't even tell their customers where to buy. They say, oh, I have this link. Please come to this link. Come to my website. Yeah, but your website has 101 things on your website. Where the hell is the freaking button? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep, yep, yep. In fact, we've I've doubled sales for companies just by doing better like user interface tests with the pages. Yeah. 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 And, and one more thing is that so super cool that I also tried is the multiple price points. Sometimes yes. they think that, oh, you know, people will buy at that $200. I said, hey, you got to change up your, your pricing point. You need to go something a little bit, you know, at a lower value. But that doesn't mean that you have no value. It's just that for people of that appetite, they can try your product first. And then if they are good, you can nurture them in your funnels. And then, oh, boom, you can upsell them into a bigger ticket product. And then we're having multiple price points like... Like low, medium, high, and premium allows multiple streams of income as well. So through your storytelling and knowing, presenting the products correctly with exactly telling them where to buy and their multiple price points will allow you to generate that recurring income that your business desire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we call that an ascension ladder. Because not everybody, like it's like dating, you know, and dating, and dating, you're not like, hi, can I stick my tongue down your throat? Hi, want to get married? Like, that's, whoa, easy, slow down, buddy, right? Like, this is way too much, way too fast. But if you consider it like, hey, like, I consider, like, I understand branding, but I'm a much, very much a direct response marketer. For me, branding is like going to a party dressed your best, but if all you do is brand, then you're sitting in the corner just smiling and waving, like, yay, yeah, hi, like, you're not talking <laughs> to anybody, you're not like, hey, can I sit down beside you, hey, that's nice, hey, can I get your phone number, hey, how are you, hey, do you want to get a coffee, like, there's none of that interaction, that's, like, I always think of, like, think of it as, like, coupon-based advertising, because it's really easy to say, I offered 100 people this coupon, and I had 10 people that took it, it's a yes or no, and then go from there, and then ascend people, so same thing like dating, hey, how are you, hey, can I sit down? 
down here and talk to you? Great, perfect. Oh, oh da, 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 da. hey, that's excellent. Hey, can I get your phone number so maybe we can go out sometime? Hey, that's excellent. Hey, do you want to go for lunch? Which is a low dollar offer, right, compared to marriage. <laughs> you know, and then just move up the relationship and build that relationship with people. All things considered equal, people want to do business with their friends. All things not so equal, people still prefer to do business with their friends. So try to, you know, oftentimes 90% of sales don't happen on the first touch, the first engagement with someone. So sometimes mm-hmm. you can really kill the relationship and hurt people if you're off if you're asking to buy if, you know if you're asking people to buy right away now it doesn't mean you can't have things for sale but it's also how you approach it you can try mm. to you, you said people hate being sold but people love to buy things people yeah. love to buy things but they hate to be sold i mean it's a whole like even if i'm already doing something and you tell me i, I, t- I should do it i'm gonna stop doing it because i don't want you to tell me what to do you know, it's that mentality. But if it's like, hey, have you heard about this? It's kind of neat. And check this out. And one of the keys is to ask people to try not to buy. Hey, just try it out. Just try it out. Just try it out. If you don't like it, you got 30 days, you know, but just try it as opposed to buy because it's such a like a confrontation, like commitment, like, like, I don't know. I just find that that works, works a lot better. And again, it's, yeah, it's more but- relationship focused. So this is great. Great, great stuff. Yeah. I agree with the relationship thing. Even when we run our cafes here in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, I mean, the way we sell also at multiple price points, we reach out to them. Like, for example, we buy a cup of coffee. If you want, you try our meal, our set meal. And then if you really love it, you can go for the bigger ticket item. And on the ground, we do have a manager who goes around and, you know, kind of talk to people and make people feel at home. And because there is this familiarity, people keep coming back Mm -hmm. and keep coming back and Mm -hmm. keep coming back. And then online, when we do our uh, skincare distribution, it's a, quite a different ball game. It's a more of the entry where you say, try this product, first, you know, try this product, mm-hmm. you know, give us your name and email address and your home address. We'll send a trial pack to you. Try it for 30 days. If you love it, buy from us. If you hate us, it's okay. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> so so it's kind of interesting experience for me to run both sides. One is a brick and mortar business and then one is an online business, online kind of a distribution business so it's kind of interesting you know how do you how do you like you said the tactics are pretty much different but the strategy wise you need to think through where the flow is and how do you bring the customers in without being pushy or without being salesy and yet because they love to buy it Mm -hmm. exactly and actually a really big a really great tip for anyone that is in an offline brick and mortar business oftentimes you can test your marketing online really quickly before you go spend all that money on the magazine ad or the billboard ad or all that other stuff, test it online first. Make sure it works. Make sure it turns into dollars in sales. Then go spend because offline marketing is expensive. Offline marketing costs a lot. Whether you're buying bandit signs or you're getting any sort of signage, you know, it's an investment. You know, you're putting things up. You're getting a wrap done, a vehicle wrap done for your car, all that sort of stuff. Like, are you just guessing and then putting it on there? Are you just doing what looks pretty and appeals to the owner and their ego? Or are you doing something that's actually getting results? Well, find out. Get your messaging right online first. For like 50 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, you can validate stuff on Facebook. I know guys that do that with their books. They put, instead of before they choose the title of their book and, and, and a cover, for launch they'll set up some landing pages and they'll set up some ads on Facebook and they'll test different covers and different titles and they'll see which one gets the most pre-orders and they refund all the people that you know that for the book that doesn't exist or they email and go hey we actually decided to go with this name this title are you still interested and then go that way and then now they have something that's proven as opposed to just stroking their ego and having because that's what Madison Avenue and like a lot of that a lot of the advertising you see done for big corporate companies it's not for the customers it's not it's for the shareholders and the CEO CEOs that want to sit around and feel proud about bragging how great their company for. It's not marketing designed to drive sales. If it were, it would be totally different and it would be a lot more like some of the most, the best online marketing you see and all the old school direct mail marketers that used to, that they were, and even phone sales, outbound phone sales. Like that's all, that's all stuff that's tied to results. So it's a great tip for anyone that's doing online or has an offline business. If they feel like any, all this online stuff doesn't apply to them, it does. You can still build a community. You can still have a Facebook group and a Facebook page for people based around your business, all that sort of stuff, and build a way for people to connect with each other. 
And that's another mm, one. And what, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, a, a business community. One of the other success that we had with our retail business was that p- people like to see change in terms of the menu. So you could have the same menu for the longest period of time, but you do need to change up some of the things. Mm-hmm. So, like for example, the ty- uh, like January or February is Valentine's Day. You have the Valentine's menu. You kind of like have to keep adding and tweaking your menu every six months to a year. Otherwise, people will get bored. Like a supplementary uh, menu. Mm-hmm. Second thing is running a promotions every three months because people get bored and they forget about you sometimes. So you got to reconnect and reconnect. Well, I think one of the big P's that we see in my businesses, whether offline or online, is retargeting. It's about re-engagement and retargeting. So retargeting is more of the online part where you know, we have a distribution of our business where people sign up for trial packages and trial packs and then they don't buy. So how do we retarget them, mm-hmm. which is to upload them into custom audience on Facebook and then we retarget them through the ads. So that worked wonders for us. Another success that we had was re-engagement with our audience through our cafe business because we have an online ordering platform. So what happened is people can just log in with their Facebook and we capture all their details and then if they don't buy from us for maybe two weeks or maybe three weeks, we will send them a push notification or we'll send them like, you know, an email or something to make sure that we re-engage the audience or push them a promotion to get them to keep coming back. You see, when we want to do business, it's about recurring income. If you're just doing business for the one-off income, please yeah. don't do a business. Yeah. Go and do a hobby, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well said, yeah. yeah. It's all about building. It's about lifetime relationships with your customers to, to yeah. be their go-to person for blank for their life yeah yeah so retargeting and re-engagement is the huge piece for getting the recurring business it's prolonging the lifetime value of a customer how many times does a customer buy from you do you track that how many you know how much do they buy from you in a lifetime value do they buy you know five hundred dollars worth of products or do they buy three hundred dollars worth of products because all these things are metrics that you need to track in your businesses both offline and online yeah yeah so well said so well said so what do you feel, and one of the, well, actually, even before we go, one of the things I just want to point out is when you talk about re-engaging with people, so the tactics for that, you talked about remarketing was a tactic, but the idea, the strategy, the principle of staying engaged with people, like someone showed interest as a lead and then fell off, let's do something else for them, that's a principle and a strategy that's not going to change for a while. Now, the tactic, how do you remarket, can you upload, I know Google AdWords, I think last year, now you can upload custom audiences to Google too, like, you know, like the tactic stuff changes, but again, if you just, if it's a business owner if you stay focused on the what you're trying to accomplish and why you're trying to accomplish it you can find out all that other stuff with google with some help with hiring people that have the expertise and the tactical level so it's anyways i just wanted to point that out because i thought it was a great example but my next question for you is what do you see as the future what do you see as the future of of online marketing what do you see as the future of even entrepreneurship for people well i think wealth First of all, wealth is a habit. To create wealth in your business, to create online marketing in your business is a habit. It's an everyday thing. It's not, oh, you learn today, you know, things are moving so fast. You learn today and then you hope that things don't change tomorrow, but every day things are changing. So first, you need to embrace change. Mm. For the future economy that's happening right now, aren't all entrepreneurs think you need to look into businesses where, you know, it's no longer just five years, it, it will transform or what we call the revolutionize the, the world, five years or 10 years. It's no longer that nowadays is three months, six months, or even shorter. So for us entrepreneurs, we must stay current with the trends. We, we, we don't get caught up with the shiny object syndrome, but more of the strategy. How can you constantly refine your messaging? I mean, come on, live streaming is the thing right now. It's in right now. And and, you know, I used to run webinars, but my webinar registrations, you know, kind of drop over time. Yeah, gone. And and my live streaming, I've done almost a thousand episodes of live streaming and I tell you, results are tremendous. Even though you think that people are not watching, but people are watching, people are following you. And if you think that you still want to stay in your dinosaur mentality, then you know, your business will be a dinosaur and we will be outdated. So leveraging on technology, constantly learning is one thing. Also looking at building a community because these days it's no longer just about, oh yeah, sending email marketing, email marketing, sending out emails. No, 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 no. Nowadays it's all about behavioral marketing, learning what clicks, where do they go, uh, what 
you know, where, where are they reading in the emails and talking to them specifically to the area that they're interested in. Because when they are in, when you are able to engage them at that area at the moment in time, that's when they feel that you are interested because be interested, then be interesting. Mm, mm, yes, I've heard that before. That's a great, be interested, then be interesting. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like that. Hold on, I'm writing that down. Interesting. I've got so many notes. Again, I always say this on my calls. I hope people have pen and paper and are taking notes because this is a good one. You may want to go back and listen to it again. There's a lot being said, a lot going on, a lot of great value bombs being dropped. And I really think that this is a call that if you listen to a couple of times, you'll probably pull things, new things out that you missed every time. I mean, we've covered, I'm just looking at my whiteboard here, we've covered a ton of great stuff. I'm loving this. Oh, I've, I, I think I missed the one more point, which is building the community because now that everybody is out there, you know, blasting and having landing pages and running ads, at. building a community is key to your success right now so i do have a community of about 8000 women in my group and nobody can take the authority away from you in fact it's because of your community this social media strategy called creation and community because when you add value to people people want to talk to you and because of this creation of value through your community you could leverage on this community to bring people into the community people want to talk to your community and even though they try to maybe undercut you to a certain extent i mean like using old practices they won't be able to do that you know why because the community trusts you as an authority you are the authority and you have that niche and you're able to provide the kind of value that people want they could learn from a lot of people no doubt but having a community will strengthen your stand as the expert in your niche mm -hmm. right because again people get to know like and trust you so they know what you're about and they just know it almost makes it easier for them to make decisions because they have vetted you and they've seen you over time and to me that's what a brand is for me branding is your a relationship I, I for me the word brand and relationship is synonymous it's the same thing so for me branding is not how good is my logo how pretty are the colors it's the relationship it is how you feel when you see the logo but it's how are you treated over time? What's your experience? I mean, you and I have a brand with each other because we've had a few conversations. And to me, that's how it expands over time. And I think that that's where, again, you get into brand equity and brand value. That's where people know who you are and they can kind of predict. There's confidence that they can predict how you will react in certain scenarios. And that gives them a sense of comfort. Comfort in doing business with you, comfort in going to with you for advice, and even things like as a teacher, if you're just trying to learn from someone, you imprint on someone, right? The same thing like you have a teacher and someone, and once you imprint on someone, you have a brand new teacher, you got to build that rapport. It's almost like just there's like there's more static in your talk. You know, you might have just met, they might seem all right, but the old teacher you've had or, you know, the person you have a better established relationship, you almost can anticipate and finish each other's sentences. So all of a sudden, the communication just flows easier. So when you build that community and you've got that value that you're giving to people over time, you're doing two things. You're also deepening the bonds together. There's something called mirror neurons. You said a couple of seconds ago when I said something, you were like, hmm, that's like two fax machines talking to each other back in the day. Like when people talk, they're nodding and they go, hmm, hmm, hmm. And like, you know, they're, they're giving feedback. There's a back and forth almost like like a ping pong ball that goes back and forth in that communication and there's comfort in having a well-established routine with someone that's why it feels great to go vent to your friends because psychologically you know that you've been heard that you know and it just spreads out and they've proven that like women that were terminally ill with breast cancer survive on average 18 months longer if they're part of a support group as opposed to if they just go it alone and are with their family and friends because then they can feel understood and heard by people that know that they know like and trust and they, you know they've got similarity and history with there's a lot of value to that which goes back to when you said always go back to family that's really important for your health and for keeping you grounded because a lot of us you know we might get so far you know dedicated to growing our business all that you got to go back to the people that you know you know and again why are you doing this and you know not always be all business 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 but you i mean you you know it's good to be like that but there's too much of anything right Mm -mm, that's right. I also believe in the keys of synergy. I mean, in terms of growing your business. I mean, because you asked me about future business, how is it going to be like? I think there's uh, keys of synergy. There's five keys that I want to talk about. The first one that I mean, I always tell this to my team. Okay, first is to listen actively. Even though you think that it's not important right now in the online world, it's still important to listen what your people want and what your customers want. Because now, you know, even more, you know, you need to shift your focus onto customer-centric practices to 
to bring in you know the audience and bring in the flow yeah too you need to have you need to have leverage so always leveraging on technology because businesses are moving so fast these days that if you don't leverage on technology you're going to lose out how so uh, because like for example I mean you're using bots now we used to use yellow pages and start calling people hey you know do you want to buy our stuff but right now we are selling all the way through into their messenger inbox on Facebook uh, but that will not be possible if you if if that, without technology and you need to leverage on that so that you can be more effective more efficient and more productive in terms of your business the third one is to be flexible and speak up now in when you do your social media marketing you must be not afraid to speak up if you choose to be hidden underground under the blankets then forever you'll be gone because this is a crowded marketplace the more you shout out the more you speak up the more you stand out the more you will be seen and that's when you start to differentiate and you need to learn how to what we call to tell the truth right you don't just be fake because people can just google about you and there's social proof mm-hmm. everywhere and people will buy from you so you need to build this treasure trove of social truth social proof right mm-hmm. so you must have that tell the truth with compassion and have that platform for people to rate and review you moving forward the last one is to agree to agree now agree to agree meaning that in a team because you see for business to grow besides technology and everything else we need to have a team teamwork is so important for us like we don't work alone you know we to grow businesses is all about collaboration and leveraging as a team so we must come together to agree to agree to come to a commit to a resolution and you know don't lay blame don't uh, go into self justification you know we take responsibility to solve the issue you know instead of Hey, it's all your fault. No, we come together. We look for an inspiration, motivation, and knowledge for growth to increase sales, attract more clients, sell high-ticket coaching programs, retreats, and maximize your profits. Mm-hmm. Well said. Boom. So listen actively. Leverage technology. Be flexible. Speak up. Be seen. Tell the truth with compassion and give people the opportunity to rate and review you and agree to agree. Focus on teamwork and working together and collaborating so you can grow and just do more everything, more of everything better. That is so well said. Did I miss anything? No, it's awesome. You wrote down everything. Wow. So, right. Well, I'm a writer downer. These, these interviews are as much for me as they are for all the other people, right? So, um, obviously, you're way more than just a pretty face. And so, it's just been a lot of value to be able to have you share and share a lot of this with me. If anybody else is resonating, or if anybody else listening to this call is resonating with you and they want to follow up, how do they get in touch? How do they reach out to you? How do they get, join your community? How do they get involved? Yeah. So, they could look out. They can come to Soul Rich Woman, S O U L. R I C H W O M A, not E M A N. So Soul Rich Woman, let the A mm-hmm. dot com. You can reach out, go to the website. You should be able to find me. If not, look, look for me. My name is Janisha, G E N E C I A, Alora, A L L U O. RA. Now I have a free gift to you just for money stress. Now this is a free ebook that I want to give out to those of the ladies who are encountering some issues, maybe their business, their stress about their financial cash flow. Well, you can go to soulrichwoman.com slash freebies, F-R-E-E-B-I-E-S, and then you can go and download over there. That's awesome. So that was, it's soulrichwoman.com forward slash freebies. Is that correct? Yeah, freebies. Yeah, that's Good. right. So Soul Rich. S O U L R I C H W O M A N dot com forward slash freebies. F R E E B I E S. That is yeah, so awesome. Right. That is so awesome. So, Janicia, is there Janicia, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? Uh, <laughs> Well, I, for me, I what I'm hoping to achieve is that I believe that success isn't about glorious wins. It's about behind-the-scenes work that we do with others that matter. It's about helping others to stay focused on their goals and stay motivated enough to do their best to realize their potential. So basically, my vision is to lay the groundwork for other women's success and then to take a step back to let them shine as well. And that is what Soul Rich Woman is all about. That is so well said. So excellent. So please, again, if you if you found any value from this, go check out that website. Go download some stuff and go connect with her on social media. 
I'm so I appreciate your time so much today. You've given freely. You've given tons of tips. It's a great call. People should definitely go back and listen to this again. And I know you could have been taking care of your own community, your own tribe. So I appreciate you coming here to help me and my people. And just thank you so much for your time. And I know it's late for you too. We're 12 hours apart. So thank you for just being a trooper <laughs> and dedicated to helping change the world. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank You've you. You've reached the end of our interview. Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give to them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I 